All the motion you see here is created by one motor. What you're looking at is the culmination of four months of research, CAD, prototyping, and programming. It's called a zoetrope. What the heck is a zoetrope? To answer that question, let's back up. One of the first zoetropes was invented in 1865 by a guy named William Enzyme Lincoln. This consisted of a disc with pictures running along the inner rim. When spun and viewed through these slits, it created a continuously repeating two-dimensional animation. The same idea can be applied to three-dimensional characters. A guy named Kevin Holmes designed his own 3D zoetrope, which he calls Formation. Instead of viewing the rotating frames through slits, he uses super bright LEDs to illuminate each frame. After seeing this video, I was like, okay, I gotta make me one of these. I started off with a two-dimensional prototype just to get my bearings. Then I made a basic three-dimensional version of rolling bottle caps using a stepper motor and some LEDs. This worked out pretty well, but there was still room for improvement. So, I got some tips from Kevin at Formation and geared up to make a full-fledged three-dimensional zoetrope. My prototypes taught me two main lessons. The first of which is that if I wanted to make a better zoetrope, I needed to do a serious amount of CAD because every frame has to be positioned exactly the same distance apart from the others. I designed the main structure using aluminum extrusion, and I made each frame of the animation attach to the carriage separately for easier assembly. Then I made some characters for the animation and marked their positions in each frame. Then, it was high time for a build montage. After I assembled the main structure, it still needed a light source. The second thing I learned from my prototypes is that if I wanted to overcome the room lights, one strip of LEDs wasn't going to cut it. I needed high intensity LEDs that could provide a lot of light in a short amount of time. Fortunately, I happened to work for a company called Smart Vision Lights, where they make high intensity industrial LED lighting for machine vision. All right. Dan is not at his desk right now. All right, we've got an SOBL 300 by 300 backlight. Looks to be about the right size. This will work. I'll just snag this real quick. Crud. After uh, borrowing a light from work, I wired it into the controls box for my zoetrope. After writing the software, everything was ready for a full functions test. Let's review how the animation works. Each frame of the animation is mounted onto this central disc, which is spun by this motor. Each new frame moves the characters a tiny bit forward. In order to create movement, we need to pulse the overhead light every time the disc rotates to a new frame. Since there are 20 frames in this animation, we need to pulse the light every 18 degrees of rotation of the motor. We can do this thanks to an encoder on the motor shaft. Every time the motor rotates by 18 degrees, we pulse the light for one millisecond. Then the light remains off until the next frame is in position, and so on. This leaves frozen images of each frame that, when viewed consecutively, appear to move. I said before that there were 20 frames in this animation, but if you look closely, it's actually longer. To see what I mean, let's watch one full rotation of the carousel and count the frames. We see that there are 20 frames total. Now let's watch one character from start to finish and count the frames. From this, we see that it actually takes 46 frames for a character to complete the animation, not 20. What's going on here? Kevin calls this effect animation multiplexing. It allows you to create longer animations without increasing the number of frames. Okay, but how does it work? Well, I'm glad you asked. The answer to this question seems complicated at first, but it's actually really simple. Consider this animation of a running stick figure. It takes him 60 frames to get from the start to the finish line. Now let's say our total frame count is limited to 15. In 15 frames, the runner doesn't get very far, but there's still a way that he can reach the finish line without breaking our 15 frame limit. If we go back to frame 1 and add a runner at the exact position where the first runner left off in frame 15, 
watch what happens. This is still a 15 frame animation, but when we play it twice in a loop, a single runner now moves 30 frames total. Using the same method as before, we can add another runner to frame 1. Now, after 3 loops of the animation, a single runner travels 45 frames total. Adding just a couple more brings our runner all the way to the finish line. The key thing to understand here is that there are several 15 frame animations all stacked together. Every 15 frames, one guy runs from here to here, another guy runs from here to here, and so on. The last frame of each loop matches the first frame of the next. Pretty cool, right? This is exactly how my Zoetrope manages to fit 46 frames of animation into a 20 frame loop. If you think this video earned it, please consider subscribing and clicking the bell so you're notified when I post a new video. Huge thanks to my newest Patreon supporters. If you want to see more content like this, please consider supporting the channel on Patreon. Thanks for watching.